you giving, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe in the business Not because they wanna do it, just because they heard it pays And who the fuck wants to be poor, no one, that's how we've been raised Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shit how are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Guys, you know what's great? When we do a video and someone finds value in the video and then they share back with me a message saying, hey, Ganji, I love what you do. I love what you and Russ do, you and Connie do, what the Tear Talk panel puts together. And I want you to know that one of the shows you did motivated me to do the right thing and it turned out to work well. And that's great because guys, by the way, we throw out this advice. So it's great to see that the advice has value, that you're able to apply it. But what's even more humbling is that you trust the advice from this panel. And I'm going to share a quick story that this officer wrote and how a supervisor, unaware of their actions, could have set this employee up for failure. But the employee was able to look to our videos, have the strength to do what's requested from these videos, because that's the key. I mean, we can give advice all day, but you know, if you don't have the strength to implement it, and then be the better for it. It's just that it's humbling when you get someone that messages you and tells you that your video had value, value enough that I applied this and it worked. So I'll give you a quick rundown of their story, how the supervisor committed to these actions that just supervisor was blind to the potential of the consequences behind these actions and how the officer was able to do the right thing. And then the comment that he says at the end about you know, the importance of the videos that we do. It's just very humbling. Now, guys, if you haven't, the show Tear Talks for you, brave men and women that work in corrections, so please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. We're going to go to our sponsor. When we come back, I'm going to break down what the person sent my way. Stand by. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. All right guys, so I'm not gonna say the officer's name for obvious reasons, but basically the officer works in a maximum area of the facility, so it's like it, it's 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 still max custody, but it's a step below isolation. And the inmate had just came off a ninety day restriction. So what I mean by restriction is no commissary, no TV. And the inmate is deciding to use the phone, which is you know what's in their privileges. They're allowed to use the phone. And the inmate decides that they're going to go past 15 minutes. And by the way, there's other inmates that want to use the phone. So somehow, one of the inmates that's waiting to use the phone grabs a hold of the cord. And he threatens to cut the phone cord because he's like, hey, this inmate's on the phone too long. No one else is getting a chance to use it. So basically, I'm going to threaten to cut the phone cord because if we can't use it, then nobody can. So the officer does speak to the inmate who's threatening to cut the cord. And then he tells the other inmate, hey, you're on the phone too long. Work with us. There's other people waiting. You know, come on, be courteous of other people. He does allow the inmate to talk for about 15 more minutes. And then eventually he goes back to the inmate and says, hey, you got to pass off the phone. You've had more than enough time. Let's go. And the inmate refuses to do it. So the officer does what's correct. Cuts the phone call. It is what it is. You were given way more than enough time. I got the other inmates I got to get to. Cut the phone. Done. When the sergeant finds out that this officer cut the phone, which is within this officer's responsibility to do so, again, because they can mediate the disputes of, could be TV, phone, whatever. And again, look at the reason why the officer did it. The inmate was on the phone for so long that, you know, the other inmates were getting row you know, rowdy. So, hey, you're done. Phone call's over. The sergeant, unfortunately, believed that the officer was wrong and kind of made it known in the unit that the officer was wrong. And that this could lead the officer to being grieved by that inmate. So, later on, maybe I, th I think it's within a couple of hours, the officer has his Mountain Dew, which they're allowed to have. He's drinking the Mountain Dew. And the inmate comes up with a folded piece of paper made to look like it's the grievance. 
and says, hey, I was thinking about grieving you, but how about you give me that Mountain Dew? And then consider the grievance gone. And the officer watching our videos, but guys, video's only a piece of it. I mean, this officer already had the heart in them. This officer quickly said, write the grievance. Basically, I did nothing wrong, so write the grievance. Here's my name, here's whatever it is. You know, you're trying to work out a deal. It's not gonna happen. The inmate later admitted that he tried to flip the officer and that the grievance or the paper that they had rolled up was an old grievance. But think about what motivated that inmate to do that. What motivated that inmate to do that was the sergeant's actions. Telling the officer that they're wrong. So now the inmates got leverage and the inmate tried to employ that leverage and what that officer did was he neutralized it immediately. But I wonder if the supervisor is aware of what they did, the consequence of that action of yelling at that officer and telling the officer that they're wrong when, when this officer wasn't wrong. And then pretty much handing over that leverage to the inmate so they can try to manipulate that soda. And guys, it may seem small, but that's how it starts, guys. That's how it starts. It's a test. And had that officer folded, God knows where they would be today. But I just want to say how it ended. This is what becomes humbling. The last paragraph, the statement made from the officer says, a rookie afraid of a write-up behind the grievance might have went for that trick that the inmate was doing. But fortunately, I was on the floor instead of a new boot. I want to thank you because of your insight with Russ Hamilton. I was able to see it for what it was and handle the situation with a positive outcome. And then he says, thank you for the words, because I gave him some words of encouragement. I basically said, wow, that's completely humbling. So it amazes me how people are able to take what we teach and apply it to the real world. That's why we do what we do. That's what motivates us to continue doing what we do. Thank you for trusting us with the information we provide to see that you have value and then apply what is taught. It's amazing to me. In the end, we could teach all we want, but it takes heart to do what's in the lesson. So well done, sir. Obviously, you're in the right profession and I'd walk a tear with you any day. And he goes, thank you for the words of encouragement. Please keep up the good work. We on the front line appreciate you and the educational support you offer. I think that's pretty cool. So, But just think about the story, though, the supervisor's actions, the consequences. And then this inmate thinking they have leverage now because the sergeant who was wrong to begin with made it evident that he believed the officer was wrong, which gave the, the motivation to the inmate. Hey, I got some leverage. Let me see if I can play this officer. And now what happens? He's right. What about if there was a rookie that was afraid of a write-up? Would they have given up their Mountain Dew? Would they? And we know that's the start. It starts with that superficial request. And then down the line, what's the end result? Probably someone in handcuffs that's now a threat to the facility. But do we ever go back and ask why? How it all began? Not to minimize their actions, but how it all began? Could it began when that supervisor embarrassed that officer, which gave the inmates all the leverage they need. It's a good story. Thank you for sharing it, and I appreciate that you find value in what we do. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. Please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe. Whoa.